Hello, Internet. This is Lord Mad Dog, and we are playing From the Depths. So today I'm coming at you with probably the last build I'm going to do for this game for a long time. And the object of it is to build a end game vehicle out of nothing but asp. See, I've built every, well, at this type of game, I've play, built every type of end game vehicle type there was. You know, missiles back when they were really good, I made some end games for that. And lasers and particle cannons, you've seen that. And even crams can be done, but I'm not, I'm not an enthusiast of crams. I don't like them much at all, but they're done. They've been done a lot. However, the hardest challenge is building a, at least for me, I, I mean, and no one else has seemed to argue with it when I've said it, is that building an advanced projectile system or advanced cannon system to, for end game ships. So that's the object of the day. So, so I started out by uh, building what I thought was a good prototype cannon. So this is not, I don't end up using this cannon at all. It's just more or less what I thought I might want to go with in the kind of the, the, the point. So I tested it out here, seeing if this is a Valkyrie. I know it's not nothing that great and it's definitely not in game. It's only white flares, but this is just a general tryout of different weaponry and seeing if I could do use an advanced cannon to actually beat the end game. And how easy that defeated that, I thought, eh, okay, yeah, I think this cannon might even work for, for the more of the closer to the end game. I might need a little bit more tweaking. That's what I thought at the time. However, I end up rebuilding this cannon a lot of times, and it doesn't end up looking like this at all, so don't worry. But, okay. Let's go ahead and jump over to the actual starting of the building of the vessel I am going to use. So this is, um, I am building this giant circle thing, and you're like, what would you build a giant circle for? And this is not even the end of the giant circle thing here, but I, yeah, I am building a giant circle thing. You'll see what it is eventually. It's, uh, and here, um, to build a circle, you take kind of hard to explain um all right yeah, yeah okay let's say you take um you want it to kind of be kind of come so, so harsher so you would start with a, a a one slab then go two slab then go three slab then go four slab and then turn the slab around upside down I mean, built backwards to what you're currently going. And you'd have to have blocks behind them because you can't just go slab, slab. Uh, you know, uh, slopes, not slabs, slopes is what I'm talking about. You can't just go slope, slopes. You have to have blocks behind them. You just take that slope and you, you flip it around backwards on number four and then you gradually go back up to a not uh back to number one so you get that kind of they meeting together and they're meeting together and they kind of form that that little indentation and it's pretty much that 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 thing for creating any type of smooth circular uh build that's at least what i've discovered so here is the first part of it it's going to be a giant drone and it yes massive drone so this is just a testing out of what is built the drone here and i want to see this is unpowered i want to see if i can get it to lift itself unpowered and uh yeah it's actually i actually eventually do get this thing to lift itself there unpowered completely unpowered and so i this this drone piece here will work now I realize, and yes, I need to tell you, you don't want to do this in any shape, way, or form. It, this is all for aesthetic because I'm trying to make this one look the best looking design I've ever made. At least that's what I'm going to try to do. Now, um, the, you, you really don't want to go with, I, tried, I, tried, I thought if you maybe you could put two like midair without touching to see what happened, but no, it doesn't become a new unit or a new object. Uh, uh, you don't want to have your spin blocks open at all 
So here I'm going to go ahead and now that I have my drone pieces, I need to build, I need to have four because they're drone. You need to have four. Oh, and um, here, let me skip forward here. This is just a little bit more testing I did. I put the, the, the cannon and I spawned this in and thought it was funny. I thought it's so you can do this with anything though. All right. Let's skip a little bit forward here. Here we are. Now I'm actually going to start to build that. Okay. This object here is to build the basic outline. It's not going to be the shape at all. Now I've got my four, like I was saying, and now that I got my four, um, for my my one, but I can make it into four uh, drone circular thingy. I can actually map out the size of my ship. So here I'm trying to figure out the exact size of what it'll be like. So I'm going to put four of these on 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 sides, and then I'm going to build out the shape and make it uh, look. Pretty nice, actually. It, I, you, when you see the end design, I think you'll be pretty pleased. It does look pretty nice, but I like it. So as you can see here, I'm just taking this one here, and I'm going to place that there, and I'm going to flip this over and flip exactly. One, to get it symmetrical, of course. With something like this, it's got to be symmetrical. And we're going to bring it out here. So that's the size of the gun I thought I was going to go with a, a begin originally um, like I said though that's not the gun I actually end up using in, in the least bit because uh, that's an ugly bunker type gun and I wanted to make this good looking and here again I've got it perfectly placed make it so it's equal with the other one come back here a couple times ah and when I place this one for some reason it didn't actually place place like I wanted it to. So I have to replace it again. And I forget exactly how I placed it the first time. Because these things, they aren't, these things in of themselves are not actually symmetrical. Well, they're kind of symmetrical, but they're not symmetrical. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, oh, it's pretty easy. One side, the it's not all four equal laterals uh, symmetrical. The front and back are not symmetrical with each other. Well, yeah, actually they are. No, at different angles they're not symmetrical. I wanted to be completely circular and symmetrical, but it didn't end up turning out that way. Here I'm just actually looking at a little bit of how I want to actually design and put it to connect it in there. But I also wanted to try out uh, testing and see if I can actually get this thing to fly by and of itself. <laughs> So here I'm placing, as I normally do, I place my ejector seat style seat seating so I can eject out of the thing. And here I'm trying to get it to fly with just these four without any power at all. But that's kind of boring, so let's skip forward a, a good bit. I'm still trying to get it to fly, kind of. As you can see, I did get it up there in the air, but. Uh, as soon as I add the weight of the cannon, it flips back down. Now, here I've etched out the first connection piece to it, and I actually decided I don't like how that's connecting. So here you can see somewhat of what I was talking about a little bit easier than what, um, what than any other times that you were probably watching this. As you can see, I start out very small and I get larger, and then I go and. It, and you go to the largest you can get usually around in that seat there and so you're using your slopes and it cr cr helps create more of a circular design I mean smooth design when they touch together there see now you've got kind of a smoother circular design now that's not at all what I end up going with because it's still not quite quite what I want and uh, what I end up going with there, well, I'll let you watch. It doesn't take that long for me to figure out exactly what I want. Yeah, I think that's a, no, I don't, not quite that. I have one more time I do it again, redo it. Yeah, one more time redo it. No, no, actually, no, that's it. That's it. So you've got a kind of a, it's not an exact perfect circle there, but it is definitely um, kind of what I want. It connects quite quite good 
and now I'm just gonna block that out and hmm, I'm gonna skip a little bit farther forward to where I've actually blocked all the rest of it out you see that looks really nice doesn't it it's all smooth very blocked out that took me a long time to block that out and here I've decided I'm gonna add a little bit more thruster power uh, to this so I can actually get it to lift by itself now also you can see here I have half of a ship I have half that blocked out and I don't have the bottom blocked out and that of only the top uh, yeah I only have the top blocked out and I only have half of the ship now, what I do for oh yep see it's flying without power <laughs> what I do for the top I copied it using um, here let me pause for a second. I copied it using the 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 copied features in in the game. You know that when the capture prefab. Okay, I captured that that section captured prefab, and then I created a new vehicle and pasted this on there, and then I saved it as to be modified, and then I used the website that allows you to modify, which I think I have shown before if I don't I'll put it in the link so you know and then you can use that website to flip it around to the other side which means that I'll be able to capture this prefab and push it on the bottom of my ship saving myself probably about two hours worth of work which will be very nice so here it is flipped as you can see this is flip version once again I will now copy it begin capture uh, once again load in where is it at the big one is what I'm currently calling it's not what I end up calling it here we go uh, yes and now we have a perfectly matched and there I have to do a little bit of work and fix it up there's a little bit of places that it didn't quite go in right but that saved me a lot of time because you can't just copy and flip and turn and put that in there it doesn't work that way and but that website the website I'll put in the link allows you to flip and it can save you a lot a lot a lot a lot of time flip your design and it's also how I, I'm cutting this out here and I also have just uh, cut my design in half and flip it on itself too to where I have a whole design of it so I'm going to skip forward as I trip and do the little little add things here and there. And I, yeah, I think there's a little bit more I have recorded to show you. Here it is. This is the flipped design now, as you can see. Now I just have to fill in the, the, the blank in the middle of it. And now I have all these spaces for maneuverability thrusters. Uh, in the corners and the left, not thrusters, but I'm going to use spin blocks in there because I don't want to change the looks. And this, all this big empty space in here, it, it's completely unpowered and it moves rather nicely. I'm actually quite pleased with how smooth this thing moved without power and turned without power too. It's, and also I've put in the balancing that right there is showing you the balancing. Uh, so pitch forward, uh, roll, It'll keep it up straight at all times using those two methods right there. Thankfully, it's not too hard to balance this thing at all because, well, it's got four gigantic propellers and they're all wide based. So it's really easy to keep it aloft. Now, I do believe it's time for me to go ahead and jump forward and show you the end result. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is the Penetrator, yes, also known as the PF94. Let's go ahead and look at it. So it is a massive, beautiful little drone. Well, it's not little, it's pretty big. Okay, now some features a bit of it. Um, of course, turn, because uh, I like the turn with my K and H. Okay, U to go forward, J to go back. And it can hit a good 80, 80, 80 speed forward or backwards real easy. Uh, hitting 60, 70 right here going backwards. So you can tell it's really maneuverable, real easy. Okay, now 
Um, also, uh, I'll show you some of the inside. There we are. Don't need, actually need all of these. These were different shell types I, I was testing. I think this is the shell type I end up going with to actually, yep, yes, this is definitely it. This is the, um, no, AP capped. No, wait, I thought I did Sabat. Stop it. Yeah, actually I do. I do go using this one instead. Sabat, yes, Solid Warhead. Um, the reason why is because end game designs pretty much uh, using heat or hash or a combination of any of them on end game designs just does not work. It just didn't work at all. Now, also I also need this one, which is the EMP, which knock out their shields. Absolute have to. And here's a little bit faster shooting uh, one I use to knock out their sh their shields. Uh, it helps a little bit to have that. You can, you can actually, believe it or not, actually knock out some shields. Um, you don't need all of these, yes. Okay, now here's some features that I that most game ships do not have. To switch your shield type, you push left or left or right arrow. And so to switch to laser absorb, so we're gonna switch to laser absorb. As you can see, that's disabled, now it's enabled. And that was field protector to laser absorb. Yes. Um, not much else. That, well, there's a lot much more, but I'd rather not go into all the details. If it, You can look at it if you want to. I'll have it up on the uh, design, um, up on the workshop, Mixed Steam Workshop. So for you to download if you want to look at it. And so this is the gun. It's, yeah, it's very complicated. It's, 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 it's it, as you can see, I have many multiple odor loaders and it took me a lot to actually get them to go to the right place it took a lot of work and there's like one two three or six seven eight nine guns on each of these platforms and that's because well there had to well not had to be but it was the pretty much the best way i've seen to go go about doing it so enough about talking about it let's actually show you it in action now, I won't deny that this was a really hard, hard challenge for me to do this, to build a vehicle that can actually fight endgame godlies. And it, if I'm to be honest with you, um, well, uh, ASP endgame godly. If I'm to be honest with you, this thing can only take on the endgame godlies about 75% of the time if it's being completely controlled. Now, it's completely controlled by AI, but I'm going to take control of it for this demonstration because it's a, it's a it's a Russian roulette otherwise. And that's just because the AI doesn't always aim at good places. A lot of times the AI likes to just shoot at the very tail end of these fast moving end game crafts and not hit a dang thing. And I just can't figure out why it does that. I've tried every different type of sitting and I was like, okay, do why? Okay, so let's go ahead and try it against oops, something. The very end game, Scarlet Dawn. Okay, so we have the Thruster Crest, which are the ones you want more or less for the end game godlies. And I think we're going to go ahead and do which is the most expensive version, uh, one of them all. I think it is the Dire Harvest. Oh, wait, no, the Event Horizon has higher. But, um, uh, yeah, the Event Horizon's a little bit harder, and it's a lot of explosions, and things can go bad. But the... I think we're going to go with, the, I mean, not that hard, the Event Horizon. But I think, and the Singularity is really hard. I can kill it. It has killed it. But it's like it, like an hour-long battle <laughs> because the Dire Harvest will just keep on dodging the ass. If you've ever played the, against the, the, I mean, the, single, the, the Singularity. So let's go ahead and fight the Dire Harvest. There we go. Hitting it. And, oop, there we are. Now. Spawns way over there, and we, I'm going to try to aim for its um, center of mass. I'm not actually pointing or really figuring out exactly. I'm not aiming for its weapon. I'm just aiming for its center of mass and trying to hit it. Right now, it's pretty much out of too far out of range for me to hit very reliably. It, and it takes a bit for me to get in range of this 
vehicle. Even though I can go 75, he can go 75 as well. And sometimes he'll fly. Oh, wait, he's flying directly towards me. Now, that's, that's, that's lucky. Now, I can also adjust my height by pushing the arrow keys up and down. That's something I like. Now, the a I can put make the, if I've changed this to an aerial AI, which I decided I don't want an aerial AI, which I prop, because aerial AI is char uh, RAM. I decided I didn't want that though. I, wa I wanted to be it more to be a naval AI, which circles the enemy. But if I were to change it to an aerial AI, I could get it to match its height naturally. I could just change this. I could add two control blocks. Um, command to go up, D, uh, T, command to go down, G. And then, then the aerial AI would automatically adjust to the right height. As you can see, my first burst of weapons has pretty much come to an end. But let's go ahead and see what type of damage I have. It, it don't take very long for this thing to reload, even though it's all clipless. It doesn't take long at all. So let's see what type of damage I've done to the Dire Harvest. Oh, I've ripped out its front weaponry. Ooh, nice big old hole straight through there. And uh, did some damage against the front end of it. Not all that much. Not a big deal. Why does the this thing have... I think that's just for looks because I don't think that thing actually works maybe it does because it doesn't it always flies away it's never once in all my testing ever fly towards me and I did a little bit of damage to its backside but mostly uh, my damage has been confined to the front end of this vehicle so let's go ahead and go back into my ship here and continue to fly towards it and then shoot it down if my weapons reload. Yes, I'm actually I'm actually quite proud of this vehicle as it turned out. And I will probably pick up something to showcase a little bit better of the damage rate damage these weapons can do. Because um, it's really pretty amazing the damage output of these ASP. I mean they just pierce straight through the enemy ship and then just turn them into Swiss cheese. Now, I have also made another version of this called the Ventilator, and it uses um, lasers and lasers and um, particle cannons. Yes, lasers and particle cannons. All right, so it looks like now the, it looks like this thing has gone down, more or less. I have just now here comes the, the bigger second first of my weaponry. No, maybe not. Okay, but I am in this. As you can see, I pretty much already beat won this battle, and that's it. The only problem with that is, oh, I forgot to turn off my given resources. The problem with it is, is that you. Uh, oh wow, I almost shot myself there. Too high. Now the AI will do will watch itself and not shoot itself. Don't crash! Don't crash! Oh, don't crash! Mm, don't go the. I wasn't watching what I was doing and I ran smack dab. I did that. The AI didn't. I did it. I ran smack dab into the enemy ship. I didn't take too much damage from it though. Little laser needle there. And turning the fire as again. game slowing down a bit because of recording and at the same time of having these two big heavy things fly around. As you can see the Sabbat shells shoot straight through it like as if they were lasers. And uh, Now the AI takes over because I'm not controlling it. <laughs> I'm just zooming up more, not actually using the mouse. I'm just using the thing there to look. Yes. And down goes the dire harvest one of the higher but slightly easier designs of the end game now this thing like I said can defeat all of the other ships it can it can I, I, t I actually I've tested against all of them but it's not a hundred percent guarantee so you know it, it I mean most people don't play with the godlies anyway. <laughs> I mean, if you if you use this for any non-godly game, this thing's gonna own 
own the battlefield. There it goes. It goes down. Yes, it's going to absolutely own the battlefield. It, it's uh, cost here wise. Let's look at it. It actually costs less than the Dire Harvest, which is cost 560k. This one only costs 470k. Yes, I'm actually like, I've worked a really long time on this actually. I'm really proud of it. It turned out pretty well. Uh, as you can see, here's the damage we took up front. Not all that much, but I didn't have healing disabled um, because I forgot to turn off Avatar Giving Roll uh, there. So I should have done that. And now I'm going to run smack dab into the mountain because AI does not recognize heals. None of them do. No way it does. But okay. So yes, that let's go ahead and destroy all of these 3D start designer. And I want to show you it to power drive on destroy all vehicles on a vehicle that is a lot easier to kill. But you can actually see the damage these weapons do. And then I'll show you the ventilator very shortly because I'm going to have both of them on the workshop. All right. Oops, I hit the wrong key there, not escape. We want to go, let's see, probably the Onyx Watch, a ship in the Onyx Watch, the Bulwark, which is everyone knows the Bulwark. It is a heavy-duty anti-shippy ship. There we are. Let's go ahead and pause, bring on over to the Bulwark. And uh, let's see, where is a good place to shoot at it from? Is this angle? Yeah, this right here. Now. Oops, I forgot to take myself off that cannon there. And here comes my shot. The first amount of... Wait, they're not shooting yet. There we go. I think they're shooting. Why are they shooting? Ah, okay, I am shooting. He just has heavy, heavy shields. I forgot the shit. I didn't think the bulwark actually had shields. At least I don't remember it have shields. I'm off shooting here. I have to knock out his shields first. There we go, his shields are down. At least on this part. And now comes the Sabbath shields bouncing straight through the system. Through its, its entire, it goes straight through like a laser does completely ripping the damage right in half there I'm gonna shoot for its lower end you can see all those little blocks just falling away that's actually shoot for the back half now that we're at this angle Boom. now a lot of those shells are actually the ones you see coming in are the EMV disruptor shells because you have to be on the end game. You have to have tons and tons of disruptor shells to get through the stinking heavy, heavy shields. And now that the shields are actually more or less down and they're piercing, just piercing straight through. <laughs> As you can see, they're not massively destructive, but they do, they do they just punch, punch through the enemy. That's what the weapon's designed to do because that's what it has to do for the end game designs. It really does. There's no choice in that. It has to be all punks because I, I, I've really tried the Hessian stuff. It's got three, four layers of heavy armor. Hessian's not gonna do anything. Heavy explosions doesn't do anything. It's gotta be all armor piercing. And yes, that's, I think that's a good showcase for this one. I think it, you've seen it's it's what it's capable of. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's it's an all ass design. Now, if I hadn't been gold to make it an all ass design, I probably would have put it some because there's a lot of room left in the inside uh, for this, and I would probably put some heavy duty missiles on the inside between. I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. Let's go ahead and show you that. I'll go ahead and let the NPC just shoot at it now. Okay my AI like right here in between these two things this area here besides some detection systems uh, is well and no that doesn't work I didn't re realize that I used I've never 
it says obstructed. I've never realized that you had to have them on the outside. I've always put them on the inside. How stupid, eh? Okay, so that doesn't work, but uh, okay. So you could put a massive missile system right here and a massive missile system in here, right through here as well on both sides and have it shoot out from the side right here. I think it'd be really neat looking and pretty, pretty nifty. And yep, that's the, that's the penetrator. And it's just obliterating this little bulwark here. What was the bulwark worth? I don't remember. The P, PF9 B4. Here we are. Ah, 373K. It's actually not as hard as the white flares, but the um, perforator. The white flares perforator is actually it's one of the more harder designs. It's not even hard. The perforator is even harder than the Titan. If you take it up against the the uh, twin guards Titan, uh, yeah, the twin guards Titan, I think it actually wins surprisingly. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll show you now the ventilator. So here is the ventilator. Yeah, it's really neat. I like the ventilator. Well, because I just I like lasers more than ASP. I mean, event advanced projectile systems or advanced cannons whatever you want to say it. it's got a laser on the top and particle cannon on the bottom now the particle cannons because my computer could not handle it um i originally had a lot more particle cannons in here as you can see there's plenty of room i originally had them filled completely with the particle cannons and i was testing them on my other ship i just had one you know because it can have two turrets i just had the one on top for the particle cannons and it was working beautifully wonderfully just punching holes and everything and but when i brought it in here and matched it up with either another particle cannon or the laser it uh my computer i guess can't handle it and it automatically disconnects them and, you know it says it like it has like a max number of particle um yeah, particle cannon tubes it can have uh, or something because it's just even though they're all connected it says it is connected and it is danger and it will and it'll and then you you can find go right down to the same the certain number and after that point it won't connect so if your computer can't handle it so that that i won't be putting that version up online either because i figure most people don't have a better computer than well, what I have, well, I'm probably mediocre. It's a four, four year old computer. So, but I think this is probably a better, better for most people anyway, if you want to use it. So this is the VN94, the ventilator. So let's go ahead and give it a, it's the same, basically the same principles. You can see move up and down with the arrow keys. You can switch your, your shields with the le right and left arrow keys and everything else is the u to go forward j to go back k and h to turn yes uh, i don't like i don't like using i or i i or um i or y i just don't like doing that it's just not my style okay now let's go ahead and what do I want to try it against? Uh, it's not worth actually showing something really big. Let's go the trebuchet. Yeah, here we go. The trebuchet. Just because that was what closest to where we are. Where is this thing yet? Oh, it's right underneath me. Well, that's not good. Here I have to actually go down. I have to adjust my height. Are. Oh, not that low, not that low. Oops, I have it. Wrong shield setting. Boom. Yay! You've seen lasers and particle lasers and particle cannons at work before. They're beautiful. They shoot straight through this the entire ship. Cut it, killing it in one shot. Yes. So they can't, this is, this, I really worked on making this a one punch laser, so it can kill the, the event horizon and different things as well. But it, like I said, it, well, he's like with the other one, it still takes a bit because 
um, and it is still kind of not 100% guaranteed and that is because especially for the event horizon the event horizon loves to have shoot tons and tons of heavy heat weaponry and I have my spin blocks very well exposed and I also am shooting myself there <laughs> a little bit well, not much bad I just, I just clipped off three block three or four blocks there shooting myself with, with, with the laser just let the AI do it <laughs> that's better for this one boom now the the AI currently is set to only shoot every five seconds for the lasers to let the ch laser recharge so it can penetrate but if you're playing playing with it for low the lower end not absolute high end or not close at the end game yet this is def you can definitely crank it all the way up just go to the light the weapon control block it's in the very middle of the turret and just hit min um, max fire rate and turn it no no limit and it'll the laser will fire pretty fast boom and that is that I hope you have enjoyed this build. I, I I really like it. Why is there water? It's not even in the water. Why was there water? Okay, that was weird. It showed water effect. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. Let's pause the game there. I hope you have enjoyed this build. I hope you have enjoyed me playing from the depths. Um. I believe I will be going on to another game. I'm not sure what or when I'll actually have another game up. If you have suggestions, I know someone suggested um, uh, was another game that's a build game that's still in beta. Um, what was it called? Sol Solar Rift, Solaris Rift, or something like that. Uh, I, I don't own that game. I will see about procuring it. Uh, if I'm able to swift it with my uh, very limited uh, bank account, then I may. But other than that, I do have work to do, uh, some work to do elsewhere, and it may be sometimes before I get another video, but I hope you have enjoyed this. And I hope you have enjoyed it all. If you have, like, shares, comments, subscribe. Yeah, Lord Mad Dog, signing off. <laughs>